I've got a Fenunga Raider in the party today. Raider, you've been working and supporting our Fenunga from uh, Tihutai on the space with uh, the um, uh, the uh, the follow up, I-, I suppose, from the hearings we had in May. <coughs> and uh, so we're looking at uh, our solutions, and uh, was uh, was I think very clear uh, the message given to the commissioners that we'll lead our take, we will no longer actually rely on others to lead our take, that we need to be in the space of leading. So you've been supporting the whānau and a group that has been formed as a result of the hearings. Yeah, so we've um, it was we've met a couple of times, and um, I think that the solutions lie in our hands, and we have to, like you said, lead the solutions, because our solutions coming from a tangata whenua perspective are, is what's going to be beneficial for people, for the whenua and for and for generations to come. So that's what I believe. So when you're thinking about um, whatever entity, whether it's Whānau District Council, Northland Regional Council, entity A, whatever's going to come into play, um, we need to have the plan and, and lead that discussion as to what we want. <coughs> Hold on, Mahi, to be done in that space. I know we've, uh, you've organised or we've helped organise a, a trip to the Merimeri and uh, looking at some possible options to the uh, treatment plant at Toti'ihi and apparently they've got a very similar size community in uh, Merimeri as Kuku and uh, run a quite a successful environmentally friendly sewage scheme. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. And what we do well as Māori is whanaungatanga. So it's just about going there to our whanaungas down there or wherever. We might. We even talked about a trip up to Taipa um, and to, um, to see what what solutions are there so that the whanau can come and make up with their own solutions because the ideal solution would be in relation to that particular um, um, you know, piece of foreshore is that it gets returned back to a, mara, a, mara, a mahinga kai. Well, if you look where the um, septic, uh, the sewage uh, ponds are placed in at Todi, it's actually on a floodplain as well. So it's right on the edge of the harbour, but also when the floods come, it actually entirely engulfs the whole area, including the football field, but as well the sewage ponds. Yeah, it doesn't make any sort of practical sense. It doesn't take a um, flash um, scientist to understand what's going to happen when it floods. Eh? No, no. I mean, you know, no, tickle, tickle everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not that's not the tahi. Um, let's just, yeah, yeah. And then if we think it, so, going with the um, with the way of the of of the water. If, it, if it's going to flood, then you just let it all wash out, but it doesn't have tickle in it, and then, you know, if it gets reverted back to its original state, that will be the best outcome, the only outcome that's really acceptable for tangata whenua. Yes, and it's very similar to the Rāwane, the Ōpanoni um, schemes. They all um, uh, flush uh, the para and the tūtai into the harbour. I know that Rāwane is actually looking at a new uh, system there, uh, probably very similar to the one out there in uh, Taipa, and developed by uh, a person, I think, from Europe. And it seemed a, a real simple way of actually dealing with that tucky. Yeah, I like, um, and even from our tūpuna, like I was reading this cool as quote from Dane Finner the other day about, you know, sharing mātauranga, and it's Aye. okay to take te mātauranga or te pākeha and just, you know, and utilising it if it's for the benefit of nga uri whakatupu. That's, you know, that's not Dane Finner, that's, that's sort of just <laughs> my interpretation of it. Um, so... Yeah, so this that electrocoagulation. <laughs> aye, oh, aye, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Where they, you know, uh, there was a um, coagulate or something yeah. in the water or something like that. Eh? So at at um at the at Waitangi there was a tent set up, and then one of my um, our mates over in um, Kitty Kitty, um, Inga and Rolf, they had a um, little show of it. And I wasn't even paying attention, so I can't even tell you about it. <laughs> but they showed the science of it. Yes, I, I got to see it at uh, Marawani. Uh, they had a bit of a display from there at Marawani. And it seemed really simple. Basically, goes in one end. Uh, that's with all the tutai and all the waste in it. And it goes through these series of, um, like, plates, I think. They're like plates set up. And then uh, out the other end, uh, it separates the solids from the, um, the liquid. And the tutai and the para get separated, and out the other end almost comes almost pure water, and of course out the other side comes the solids, which can be used uh, for all sorts of things. Well, 
I, you know, it just makes sense. Like, imagine if we could put this on a really big scale and these get supported for just homes and communities, these sorts of things that create um, better outcomes for our toxic waste. I mean, if we, and it's not about a lack of resources. We've actually got a lot of resources. We've spent quite a lot on roads. I'm pretty sure we should spend a lot on just making sure our environment doesn't get paru. And this is actually a cheaper option as well. It's not an expensive option. I spoke to the fellow who was the person behind that, and, he said, and I actually talked about if we wanted to set up a papa kainga of, say, six homes, he said you could actually share uh, that uh, whole system, and it would cost uh, about $50,000, dollars forty dollars to $50,000 for six homes. I mean, so that's, it seems quite cost-effective compared with, uh, some of these tanks, you're paying thirty to forty thousand dollars for some of the uh, the septic systems at the moment. Yeah, hard out. and I just think that um, you know, as Maori with our papakainga, with our housing, and thinking about integrating that sort of fakato into the housing, it fits in with our values. Um, you know, so we could you know lead the way with those sorts of things with our papakaingas. Um, and cheaper too. <laughs> yeah, cheaper. And, you know, we, we, we need to look because, I mean, it's not that hard to go through that whole process of building a home. You've got the infrastructure. You've got the house itself, the contents, and a whole lot of things that you have to go through. And quite often, you know, our families don't have lots of money uh, spare. But if you work in that collective capacity as a collective and together pay for those sorts of systems, suddenly it becomes something that we can achieve. I think, yeah, Kotahitanga is the way to go for any housing project. It's really, um, I just think of my um, grandpa who did, you know, who, him and his siblings um, come pulled together for their housing project at Waipuna. Um, so it's the way to go, Kotahitanga. And, the, and I know it's not hard to achieve, we all know.